guys, Lemmy here. Welcome back to another art supply review. Um, today we are getting something really cool. I contacted Windsor & Newton and I asked them if I could receive a sample of their pigment markers. Now their pigment markers are a new type of marker that the Windsor & Newton brand has created and I just thought they were so cool online. I saw a whole bunch of demos and pictures created using these markers and I just thought that they looked absolutely gorgeous. They're different from alcohol based markers and water based markers and they actually look like you painted a painting with them instead of using markers. So I just knew I had to try these out because the effects that they made were just so stunning. And Windsor & Newton generously gave me a set of six and they also gave me a marker pad. So you can see that it's in this nice hard plastic casing. And the colors we have here are Pathalo Teal Light, Magenta Red Shade, uh, Lemon Yellow, Azure, black and what's really cool is that they sent me the white blender. So the blender in this set of markers is not a clear blender like you would see with other brands of markers. It is a white blender. So theoretically if I took this black and this white I could make an entire picture that is grayscale just using two markers and I should be able to get a whole bunch of different tones and it should look really awesome and really cool. So I really appreciate that. I think that that's really fun that there's a white blender instead of a clear blender. And you can see here that the marker is an interesting shape where it's thicker in the middle of the barrel and then it gets slim on both sides where the nibs are. And you can see that one end is circular and the other one is triangular. And so when you hold it, on both sides you get a different feel. But it feels comfortable both ways that you hold it. Um, on the marker it says that you have to store them horizontally so I always store all of my markers horizontally because that is the best way to store them and that is what is recommended by every company I've ever seen so um, keep that in mind that it does have that on the packaging so if you buy them you want to make sure that you do store them horizontally and the the labeling for the color is only on the circular side so if you're looking at the triangular side, there is no number, which I thought would have been really cool if they would maybe perhaps put the labeling on both sides, just in case you kind of just put all your markers away, you can see um, by the side, you know, what color it is. But, you know, I guess that they didn't want to do that, which is fine. It's fine, you know. I really like the shape of these markers. I think they look like super fancy, almost like the yacht of markers. <laughs> um, they do not have any kind of like nub sticking out, so they will roll off your desk. I am sure of it. So that might be frustrating, but they feel really nice. So um, let me see here. The circular side, oops, you can see here is the chisel nib and then the triangular side is the bullet nib. So they do not come with a brush. It is bullet or chisel, um, which is totally fine because the effects that you get are really cool. I think you would want a stiffer nib anyway because it feels like you're, you're painting. So yeah. On to the marker pad. So the marker pad that they sent me is A5 in size, 50 sheets. It is 5.8 inches by 8.3 inches and 20 pound weight. It is smooth coated marker paper ideal for blending and color vibrancy. And on the back it says created especially for the Windsor & Newton pigment marker. And this is very important because these markers, in order to really use them properly, you're going to need the Windsor & Newton brand paper. So if I use my bristle board, you're going to get a totally different effect than if you used the Windsor & Newton paper, which is what you should be using for it. It is 100% acid-free and it is clean white color, as you can see here. So I'm going to read what the website says about these markers before we get into making the swatch pad, which is I'm going to show you what the markers are like on the pigment paper versus 
normal marker paper that I would use in a drawing. But first, the website says, the Windsor Noon Pigment Marker, TM, <laughs> made using only the highest grade, light, fast, fine art pigments instead of dyes. Over 100 beautiful colors, including 24 shades of gray across four scales. Non-fade, fine art pigments instead of dyes, keeping your work fresh and vibrant for 100 years. Ergonomically designed with a comfortable, ultra-slim profile. Comfortable, or er, sorry, compatible with the white blender, allowing you to mix tones and create myriad of colors, even on black paper. So these, I guess, are very um, opaque. So you can color over black paper, which is super cool. So uh, we're going to get into the swatch pad because I just want to show you why it is so super duper important that you get the Windsor Newton brand paper before we even get into me making a picture. So we're going to head over and do that now. So for this demonstration, I'm just going to be using the Pathalo Teal Light and I picked two other colors in different brands that look similar to that. So I'm using the Winsor Newton Pro Marker and I'm also using a Copic Marker. And on the right side, I have some bristle paper, which is what I normally use in my illustrations. And on the left is the Winsor Newton brand pad that I was talking about. <clears throat> So basically all I do is I put down three lines on each paper, one for each respective marker, and then I take the colorless blender or the white blender in the pigment markers case, and I go through and I show you what it looks like when you try to move around the color or blend. Now, I must say that the paper from the Windsor Newton um, pad is much different. It almost takes the the ink and it lays it on top of the paper whereas the bristle would absorb it into the paper and because it lays the ink on top of the paper it's that's what makes it so that you can blend with the pigment markers. So you'll see that on the Windsor Noon paper the alcohol-based markers are much lighter <clears throat> excuse me, are much lighter than they are on the bristle paper. And when I use the colorless blender, I can almost pick up the color and move it somewhere else. So you don't want to use alcohol-based markers with this pad. It is especially designed for the pigment marker. And I found that blending on the Winsor Newton paper was much easier. And on a normal piece of paper, it's almost like you're just overlapping with very little blending. So I will have a picture after this segment to show you what I'm talking about where I did a profile of a girl on the Winsor Newton paper and I got all these different in-between colors of gray. And then on another piece of paper, I tried to blend a little bit of the black and the white and you can only see there's one in between color of gray. And it's just, if you're really interested in these markers, you're going to have to buy the Windsor Newton paper. I'm not even joking with you. The results are completely different. And I really, I don't like marker paper in general, but I found that these pigment markers are very fun and you're going to want this paper if you, if, you, if you use these markers. You can pick up a lot of color and move it around to other places, and then you can let it dry in certain areas. You can reactivate it um, to a certain extent, but um, yeah, you get a painterly effect on that paper. So you're definitely going to want that paper. I'm not even joking with you guys. Also, side note, I checked out the Windsor Newton website again, and I noticed that they do have a colorless blender along with the white blender. So um, I just didn't get it in the set, but it does exist if you want the colorless blender. 
So that's pretty cool. I'm glad that I accidentally found that. What I was looking for was to see if I could buy the paper on the website, which I couldn't exactly um, find directly, but I was hoping that maybe they could come out with a paper that is thicker than the marker paper that has the same glossy kind of like smooth topping that you can move the marker around and work with, but it's just like a heavier weight paper that um, wouldn't be so flimsy, you know, like bristle board almost, but with the marker paper finish. That would be really cool. I hope that they decide to like kind of look into that because the markers are really beautiful. They last a hundred years, like they said, but if you accidentally rip the 20 pound paper in half because it's very, it's very thin, um, then you're not going to have your picture for a hundred years because you're going to rip it in half. So yeah, uh, those are some things to think about, but you can't exactly see how bad the blending is here, but I, I tried my best you guys, but look for that picture afterwards with the profile. And like I said, there's only one in between gray color and then the profile on the pigment marker paper, you will see a whole bunch of different kinds of gray just using those two markers. So hopefully that will show you guys more specifically why it's important to get this paper. So we're gonna move on to the speed paint portion now. So now we're finally getting to the actual speed paint. And I'm just gonna repeat what I said before. I had a lot of fun with these markers. And while the paper was really small and I had this idea that I was gonna draw my character Faye with like this dress that would have kind of like um, bright colors but also look like the city. And I was trying to do Times Square, New York City because I live like an hour from it. I, uh, it was a little bit challenging because the paper was so small, but I think I was able to pull it off all right. And I really love how all the colors mixed and blended. So I was able to take yellow and blue and make green. And I was able to take the magenta and the yellow and make orange. So they overlapped and they mixed really nicely and I was able to get like really pretty vibrant colors from mixing them together. And I really love the black and the white blender together. Um, I wanted to kind of have the character Faye be black and white and then the dress be, you know, lots of vibrant, almost kind of like neon colors almost. and. I had so much fun with the black and white that I decided later on that I was going to do that profile of a girl with just black and white and then I later on added some pink for the hair but I really wanted to try something a little bit larger that's why I ended up doing a profile because I wanted to see how much detail I could get in and I wanted to see if kind of with the painterly textures that you get, I wanted to see how I could work that into facial structures or something of that nature. So that's why you're actually getting two speed paints in this review. And um, yeah, I think it pretty much speaks for itself. Like you can see everything that I did. I used very minimal guidelines uh, just cause I was curious to see if you could, because it was such a smooth paper and um, it had such a finish on it. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to erase the pencil if I drew on the paper with pencil and it turns out that you can erase it just fine. And yeah, so um, because when you use the markers on this paper though, however, you have to be a little bit careful. I think what makes the markers blend really nicely on this paper is that, like I said earlier, it sits on top of the paper. So with that being said, you could actually take your finger and start smearing things around if you wanted to, which I've seen some people do, but I kind of wanted to try the marker as a marker because normally when you use markers, you don't start smearing things around with your hands. So um, 
I just wanted to see how far I could get with the marker using it as a marker. And I've noticed that if you're trying to get a very flat, I want to say flat color laid down, if you take the marker and you just simply make a line, at the end of that line, some of the ink will pool up and create a little bit of a darker section. But I think that's really cool because you can make so many different textures and effects with that line tapering in that sort of way. Like I said, it doesn't really taper off. It just kind of comes to an end and it's like a darker color right there. So it's just like a whole bunch of different effects that you normally wouldn't get with other markers of like alcohol or water based. So there's these things that you kind of need to take into consideration when you're going about coloring. So I would like to lay down the darks first before I lay down the lights because if I want to go in with the white blender I want to pick up a little bit of that dark and then blend it out and make it lighter to go into the lighter area because I don't have any pale colors to start off with. Um, so that's how I work dark to light with the markers that I had. Another thing to mention is that the chisel nib, you get these broad strokes and a lot more color or pigment comes out of the marker. And then when you're working with the bullet nib, it's different because it's so small, I guess not as much comes out, which makes sense. Um, but I noticed I had a little bit of difficulty trying to lay down the color on top of areas I use the chisel nib from the bullet tip. And I'm not really sure why that was. Uh, maybe it's just because I couldn't get any traction on the paper because it was completely covered in the ink. But um, if you work hard enough, you can get it to lay down on top of that. But it was something that I did notice and I didn't know why it exactly would do that. Whereas if you just worked purely with the bullet nibs, then you wouldn't really have any, any issues. Um, so when you mix up the chisel and the bullet nib, there's different things to take into consideration. It wasn't really that big of a problem. It was just something that I noticed. I thought it was a little bit strange. Um, and that's kind of all I really have to say about these markers. I really, really like them and I wish I had more of them. And I will, I will say that these are hitting the stores on Monday. So today will be, I'm trying to see what day it is. Today will be the 13th, Friday, ooh, Friday the 13th. <laughs> Great, in uh, November 2015. And on Monday, which is the 16th, they should be hitting stores so that you can buy them in stores. Cause right now they're only available on the Windsor & Newton website. So, I would hold off on purchasing until Monday so you can see what kind of sets are available because I've noticed on the Windsor & Newton website they just sell single markers on there. And I'm not sure but I tried to look for more paper on there and I couldn't exactly find it on the website. So that's a little something to take into consideration as well because you're definitely going to need the paper if you buy the markers. And I might I might simply just not be navigating the website correctly, but I did spend a little bit of time looking for it and I couldn't easily find it, so I gave up. <laughs> ah, so that's all I have for my review. If you guys have any questions, please leave them below and I'll do my best to get back to you and answer them if I know the answers to them. Like I said, I really love these. It was a shame that I only got six. I would have loved to get a larger set to see what else I could make maybe with some larger paper to see all the details I could kind of add into a picture but also this is part of the color your city contest that Windsor & Newton is running so I thought it would be fun to kind of join that and have a themed speed paint so I hope that you guys like it and found that this tutorial were tutorial and review, I guess, was was helpful. And yeah, I'll talk to you guys next week for another video and take care. Bye guys. 
Oh, also, before I forget, big thank you to Winsor & Newton for sending me these. They're really cool. <laughs> Alright, bye guys.